So I am sharing the data file related to the case. Uh, we will run the regression analysis, then we would make interpretation. So this is the data file. Here we are having uh, the dependent variable that is the overall likeness. And we have six independent variable or six predictors, identity, visuals, youthfulness, superficial, connect and image. You can check that this is the dependent variable likeliness on a scale of one to seven, right? It has been mentioned. Then we have six independent variables. All are metric in nature, right? As you check, uh, these the measures of all these variables are scale, right? And they are also on a scale of one to seven. And this is the complete description of the label. So I will share this data file. And we are having 200 cases in sample size is 200. Now we will run the regression analysis. So we go to analyze, then we go to regression. And since we are going with the linear regression, so this will be the, our path. We will go to analyze, then regression, then we are having linear regression. So this is the dialog box of the linear regression. Here, the space for the dependent variable is only for one. So we have rebranded liking as the dependent variable. And we will select all these independent variables. And these variables have been entered in, in, the, in the independent box uh, simultaneously. So this method is known as enter method. Enter method means all the independent variable, all the predictors have been entered simultaneously. This is not the only method. There are uh, other methods also, like stepwise method, forward method, backward method, remove method. So they are, these methods are known as sequential search. Forward and backward methods are uh, software dependent, means software on in itself enter the variable as per their predictive contribution, as per their contribution. And uh, in forward, it is added. In backward, it has been removed. And stepwise and remove method are the generalization of these two methods where we have we can use different steps also. But since we are doing for the first time the regression analysis, so we have we are using the method enter, and all these variables have been entered simultaneously. Then we have a statistics button. So this is the uh, sub dialogs box of statistics. We have estimates and model field. There is one more option, R square change. R square would be changed if you are using some sequential search method or hierarchical regression, means forward method, backward method, stepwise method, or remove method. But we are not. We also include descriptive statistics. We also have part and partial correlation, and we have collinearity diagnostic also. These uh, the things will be discussed when we are discussing um, the assumptions. Then we have uh, Dar uh, Darwin Watson also. So if you want to examine the impact of collinearity, you can also include case one. Then we have plots. Plots are also being used to check uh, certain assumptions that we will discuss during the analysis. So for the plots here, we have a scatter plot. So we entered Z residual. What do we mean by residual? I will explain. Z means uh, standardized residual. I will explain what do we mean by residual. So Z residual has been entered in a Y and Z predicted. I will also explain what do we mean by predicted variable or the predicted value and Z being standardized value. So we enter Z predicted into X. We also have uh, histogram and normal probability plots for standardized residual plots also. So we include this. All these things are required for assumptions checking. We continue, right? And if we put save, so save simply means the, the values are saved on the data sheet. So in order to explain predicted value and residual, we include uh, predicted value unstandardized and residual unstandardized. You can include uh, some other also, some other options also. Uh, in order to check the multi, in order to check the impact of different variables or outliers, you can include distances also. For the time being, we are ignoring them. 
So now I, I am having the output. So here, this is the output of the regression analysis. So first I will, I, I should explain some concepts. Now, since uh, you have taken y as beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 up to beta 6 x6 6 plus the error term. So, this is known as our proposed regression model and it would be for population. So, this is known as population regression model. Since we are using a sample, here we are using a sample of size 200. So these values are estimated or these values are predicted. Okay. So beta 0 is being estimated by B0. In the same manner, beta 1 is uh, being estimated by B1 and so on. So we have a uh, estimated value like y, it would be b0 plus b1 x1, the, all these b1, b2, b3, b6 are from the, uh, they are predicted, estimated from sample. So these are the beta b values, right? And uh, since uh, we are using sample, so for sample, everything is known. So here we are not having the extraneous term. So now if we substitute these values, and for a particular case, we put the values of x1, x2, x3, then we are having a value of y. So this value is being estimated for a, for a, a sample by this value. So this value is known as estimated value or predicted value of y. And the difference of these values, y and y cap, this difference is known as error or residual. So error doesn't mean something went wrong. Actually, it gives the uh, uh, an estimate of epsilon or the error term. So they are known as residual values. So let me share the data sheet to show you these values. Right. So here. For the first respondent, the first respondent have mentioned four uh, on a scale of one to seven. For the likeliness means this is the value of y which is being provided by the respondent. So this is the observed value and this is the predicted value. This value has been estimated or predicted by the model. So this is the predicted value and it is the unstandardized predicted value as we have checked. And the difference between these two values is known as residual. So 4 minus 3.71846, it would be 2.85. Right? Now, suppose we are considering the second case. Here, the observed value of y is 2 and the predicted value is 2.76. So the difference is 2 minus 2.76. We are having minus 0 0.7, 6, 1, uh, 0 0.76152. So hope these two values are clear to you. So now we are moving back to our board. Now we are performing the regression analysis. So, so what are the essential steps? Number one, we have introduced the problem. Since we have introduced the problem, means we have, uh, there we have mentioned what is y, means what is the dependent variable. And what are the independent variables x1, x2, x3, right? And why we are doing for uh, this analysis? This has been introduction. So the problem has been introduced. The second is we would check assumptions. We would check the assumptions of the regression model. Right? So uh, when we perform the analysis, I first introduce the assumptions, but we will check later on. We will check the assumptions. Then we check what is the 
whether the model is significance or not. We examine significance of the model. What do we mean by the significance of the model? Means whether there is significant associative relationship between y and x1, x2, x6. I mean, this is the this combination or this linear combination is known as regression variant. So first we examine whether the model is significant or not. So this is known as overall significance of the model. This is known as overall significance of the model. It means model, whether the model is overall significant or not. So here, obviously there may be two answers of this significance. Answer may be yes, answer may be no. So if answer is yes, we will move forward. Okay. If answer is yes, we will move forward. Right? If answer is no, means model comes out to be insignificant. So there may be some reasons. Number the first reason may be suppose we have mentioned the wrong functional form. What do we mean by wrong functional form? We have assumed that this model is linear. It might be possible that this relationship might not be linear. It may be non-linear. Means we have instead of linear regression, we should use non-linear regression. So one reason is we have mentioned the wrong functional form. So we would check whether this is correct or not. Again, the second reason may be uh, we should consider we should consider some other predictors. Right? Means these predictors are not substantial, not important, and since uh, there are n number of uh, other predictors, n number of other variables also, so there may be some other reasons which are having an impact on y. So we have to look for these two cases if model comes out to be insignificant. Suppose this model comes out to be significant. Then we move to examining strength of the regression model. Then the fourth step would be strength of the regression model. Why strength is being examined? To check whether it has high predictive accuracy or not. we would check whether it has high predictive accuracy or not. So, so far, these two things are related to overall model. Now we move to individual part. So our fifth step would be, we examine significance of predictors or independent variables means here we are having six independent variable or six predictor. So all six may be important, all six may be significant for the relationship. And it might also be possible that all, not all six, three, four, five are only significant, means they are having an impact. It is just like the when we have relationship in the real life, then it is not necessary that everything is get affected, right? Means everything is important. All, all the 36 properties should not be matched. Even if, uh, even then we will have relationship. So this is the concept that we examine whether, what are the significant predictors, right? And then we also create hierarchy of significant predictor. We also create hierarchy of significant predictors means if we have more than one significant predictor, then obviously we are we must be interested uh, which one is having uh, the highest relationship or which one is having, which one is most important in this associative relationship. So we create a hierarchy of significant predictors. And the last step would be, we propose the regression model. So this regression model is proposed for the prediction purpose, for the future purpose. So these are the steps one has been done. These are the steps that we are going uh, for the analysis. So first I will 
tell you about the assumptions and assumptions checking uh, would be done uh, towards the end okay uh, but uh, when you write the research paper then obviously assumptions should be discussed forehand only okay so uh, these are the assumptions these are the slides so what is the first assumption? There should be linearity of the phenomena. I mean, there should be linearity in the regression parameter. So how the linearity can be checked? We can use a scatter plot. Right? A scatter plots are available even in Excel also. So we have independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. If points lie on a straight line, means there is linearity. Second. Um, mod, uh, second assumption is independent variable is deterministic in nature. So we have all exercise are uh, independent. Next is there should not be high correlation between independent variables. Means x1, x2, x6 should not be highly correlated. Otherwise, there is a problem of multicorrelity. We will discuss in detail the problem related to multicolority. Multicolority means there is high correlation, there is substantial correlation between independent variables. Now, in regression analysis, actually there should be correlation between Y and the independent variables only, but there should not be intra-correlation between independent variables. So there should not be multicolority. So this is the assumptions. This assumptions is related to predictors or independent variables. Now we have some very important assumptions related to error term or the residual term. So these assumptions can be written in one line also. So I should write the first line that this error term or epsilon should be identically independently distributed normal variate with common mean zero and common variance sigma square. Right? Let me explain that error term is i i means identically means all are same second i is independently distributed normal variate right this is a random variable as we know we have discussed that uh, this epsilon or error term is random variable so this is a random variable so it will follow a probability distribution this probability distribution is normal and for normal we require two things that i have discussed in the previous lecture also mean and variance right so the mean would be zero and variance should be uh, constant this variance is constant identically and independently distributed normal variate with common mean zero all means will be to zero and common variance as sigma square e is the suffix means it denotes the variance for e so uh, these uh, these lines are detailed in these four points number one residual should follow normal distribution that we have discussed and if there is normality and non-normality it is because of misspecification mis misspecification means we have chosen wrong functional form right so if there is non-normality is errors or residual terms are not following normal distribution means that there we are using wrong functional form. Means suppose the relationship may be non-linear or uh, it may be exponential, but we are using linear uh, regression. Next is conditional expected value. Conditional expected value means mean. Mean of the error term is zero. It has been mentioned. And residuals are independent. They are uncorrelated means the uh, correlation between all the error term epsilon uh, one epsilon two and so on would be zero they are uncorrelated otherwise there is a problem known as autocorrelation so if they are not independent if they are not independent then there will be a problem of autocorrelation we will discuss in detail the last one is all variance terms are same all variance are constant if this is so then we can say that variances are homocedastic. Homocedastic means common variance. Otherwise, there is a problem known as heterocedasticity. There is a problem, heterocedasticity means variances of the error terms are different. And if these assumptions are fulfilled, then we can have the estimation. So these are the assumptions that are required for 
ordinary o stands for ordinary l stands for least square estimation right so this ls stands for least square so this is the ordinary least square estimation so if these assumptions has been fulfilled then we can employ ordinary least square estimation and if ordinary least square estimation is used then this model is known as classical c stands for classical l stands for linear r stands for regression and m stands for model and through this model we have blue estimator blue means best means having minimum variance so best prediction would be done most authentic prediction would be done l stands for linear u stands for unbiased and e stands for estimation so we have best linear unbiased estimation right so these are the uh, assumptions if these assumptions has been fulfilled then this method application of this uh, estimation method is justified as you see we have checked these assumptions that we will discuss towards the end so these are the assumptions that we will discuss towards the end okay. so for the time being i am ignoring this right we will discuss towards the end and as as in this model first uh, i would i would discuss significance of the regression model right? right then we move forward and then in the end we will discuss the assumptions right so we are checking significance of the proposed regression model right so what do we mean by significance since we have data from sample and we want this model for the totality for the population so we want to check whether the results which are evident in the sample are significant for the population or not right so this is the objective of checking significance of the regression model since we have data from the sample we have data from a sample of size 200 we have analyzed this data and estimated this model from the uh, sample values and we want to apply this model right we want to apply this model for decision making for the entire totality of the entire population so we check whether this uh, the results that are obtained from the sample are significant in the population or not so this significance of the regression model is done by proposing h not and since here we propose h not as since h not assumes no difference so we proposed h not as regression model is insignificant means on a rustic language we can say that regression model is zero so regression model is insignificant so regression model is insignificant means r square we would discuss what do we mean by r square r square would be zero r square would be insignificant and all coefficients right all coefficient beta 0 beta 1 beta 2 or beta 6 would also be zero means there is no significant uh, regression coefficient so we will examine this h not and obviously h1 would be opposite to this so first i will explain the concept of this analysis so let me show you the data file so if you uh, if you observe the data file and you observe the values of likeliness which is our dependent variable rebranded like it this is our dependent variable so if you observe these values we have 4 2 6 5 4 4 7 2 6 means there is variation among these values so we would consider this variation means there is variation among these values so we can say that we have variation so we are considering total variation or total sum of square in y right so we have total variation 
or total variation or total sum of square. Both the sum of square is also an indication of the variation. So now we examine what are the reasons of this variation. One reason is because let me share the data file again. Okay. As you see, here we are having value four, here we are having value two. So one reason may be that the respondents or customer are giving different values to independent variable. So because of change of these values, value of Y may get changed. Right? In the same manner, as you observe, these values are also changing. So because of changing or change of these variables, this Y may change. So one reason can be with change of x1, x2, x6, the y may change. Right? It has been visualized in the model also. Since it has been visualized in the model, so that's why we are performing the regression analysis. So this reason is known as explained re regression or explained variation. We should write it as explained variation. This is the explained variation means we know the reason of this variation or this is the variation because of regression, right? Because of the regression model, because in this model, we have assumed that these independent variable, these predictors are related to Y. So if these X1, X2, X6 are changes, these Xs are changes, then Y would also change. So this variation is explained. And we also know this y, this y may be get affected by some other variables which are not included in the model. So that variation is known as unexplained variation. Why unexplained variation? Because we are not considering that variation in the model, which basically represents the error term. They are basically because of the extraneous reasons, error term, right? And they are also termed as because of residual. Residual means they are beyond the model, they are different, they are separated from the model. So the total variation may be bifurcated into explained variation and unexplained variation. Since again, we are considering variation. So this concept is known as analysis of variation or ANOVA. Means we are considering analysis of We are considering analysis of variables. Okay, right? So this is the total variation. Suppose this explained variation is very high. So if explained variation is high, so obviously unexplained variation would be low, means much of the variation is because of the regression model. Then you can say we are having a good or substantial regression model. So we can say that regression model is substantial or regression model is significant, right? Now we consider the ratio of these two variations. So suppose we are considering the variance ratio of explained variation or variation because of regression in the numerator an unexplained variation in the denominator and unexplained variation that is residual in the denominator. Okay, right? So now in this case, if explained variation is much higher as compared to unexplained variation, so value of F would be much higher, much higher as compared to one. So we are having a big F value. And since this F is an statistic or the test statistic, it will follow F distribution or the variance ratio distribution. As I have discussed uh, in parametric testing also when we are considering the ANOVA. So this is the sampling distribution or probability distribution of F statistic, right? Here we have probability of F and here we are having F value. It can 
never be negative since we are having sum of square or variation in numerator as well as denominator. This mode on the highest frequency would be at one. So as we move, uh, as the value of f is higher than, much higher than one, we get we are getting a, big, a value of f. So if we consider the corresponding right tail probability or the p value, which is denoted by significance, right? So now we are moving back to this. So if we are getting very high value of f or f is much higher as compared to one, then again, we can say that our regression model is significant, right? So if uh, f value is high, then obviously the significance of the p value would be low, right? And suppose this is less than 0 0.05, so we would reject we have proposed regression model is insignificant. It has been rejected. So we can say that our proposed regression model is significant, right? So this is the explanation. So if uh, this is not the case, if unexplained, if explained variation is not much higher as, as compared to unexplained variation, means they are approximately equal, then value of F would be near about one and Correspondingly, we have a high p-value, and if we have a high p-value and the p-value of significance is greater than 0 0.05, so we cannot reject H0. Since we cannot reject H0, then we have to say that our proposed regression model is insignificant. Now, I am sharing uh, the output for the interpretation. So this is the output. This is the first table, which gives the descriptive values. It gives the correlation among different values we will discuss when we are discussing uh, the assumptions. It, it tells us about the method that we have used. The method is enter method, dependent variable is rebranded liking, and these are the independent variables, and all these variables are entered simultaneously. Right? Now, as I have explained, we are considering the significance of the regression model, and it has been discussed by bifurcating the total variation into the two part. One is explained variation, that is regression, and other is unexplained, that is residual. So here total where sum of square is being bifurcated, total variation has been bifurcated into these two parts, right? And here we have the formula for the variance. Mean square is simply sum of square divided by degrees of freedom. It will be 5778.86 divided by six. We are getting 96.311. Here we have 202.287 divided by 193. We have mean square. Uh, we, are, we are having mean square or the variance as 1.018. So as you observe, variance because of regression is 96, and variance because of residual or the error term or the unexplained variance is just 1.08. Right. So 96 is much higher as compared to one, as we have discussed, and f is the ratio of explained variance upon unexplained variance means it is the ratio of 96.311 divided by 1.048. So we are getting a high F value that is 91.89 and correspondingly we are having a low P value or low significance as 0 0.001. And this P value is less than 0 0.05. So we reject H0 and we can say that our proposed regression model is significant. Means these six predictors or this regression variant as a linear combination of these uh, predictors is significantly associated with rebranded liking. So let us write the result. We are having F as 92. So here we can write, here we have F as 91.89 or 92. This is high value. And the P value of F is low, this is 0 0.000, this is less than 0 0.05. Right. This is less than 0 0.05, so we would reject H0. So we can say that our proposed regression model is significant. Now you can make some practical explanation of this result that regression model is significant. So this is the first thing 
that we have discussed right so this is the actually this step has been taken care of that is the significance of the regression model let us explain uh, the second part also now the next part is we are examining strength of the regression model or we are checking the predictive accuracy of the regression model right uh, so we have discussed this bifurcation of the total uh, variation into the these two parts so here we propose r square r square is actually known as coefficient of determination this r square is the ratio of explained variation right or sum of square because of regression as per the anova table divided by total variation this is the total variation tss right let me show you the output right here we have ssr as 577.868 so it will be in the numerator and total sum of square is 780.155 so we divide 577 divided by 78p right if we divide then we are getting a value of 0.741 so this is the r square right so let us discuss this value this is the r square right and now this r square uh, is the ratio of sum of square or variance so it can never be negative so it should be greater than or equals to zero we should have some space right this is known as coefficient of determination so this value will always be greater than 0 and since explained variation is always a part of the total variation so explained variation can never be greater than total variation mean numerator can never be greater than the denominator at most explained variation would be equals to the total variation means numerator can be at most equals to the denominator so the maximum value is 1 right now we discuss some values of r square suppose r square comes out to be 0.90 so 0.90 can be written as 90 upon 100 so if we compare with this so what we have so if the total variation is 100 then out of the total variation the explained variation is 90% means here our model is being able to explain 90% of the total variation in y means our, our proposed model is being able to interpret able to explain able to take in care of the most of the variation in y so obviously if this is the case then you can say that this model is strong so we can say this model is strong means if we are having values of r square near to 1 then we can say that our proposed regression model is having high predictive accuracy or is our regression model is strong so if values are near to 1 then we can say that this relationship is strong right suppose we take one more case suppose r square is 0.15 0.15 means 15 upon 100 15 upon 100 means if the total variation is 100 then the explained variation part is just 15 or 15% means our model is able to explain only 15% of the total variation means most of the variation is been explained by residual or the error term means they are extraneous to the model so if this is the case then we can say that our model is not so strong so it gives the impression of a strong model 
a highly accurate model and it gives the impression of a weak or not so accurate model. So if values of R square is near to zero, then we can say that we are having a weak model. In our case, R square is 0.73. Let me show you this value again. So here R square, sorry, R square is 0.741. Adjusted R square is 0.73, right? So here R square is actually 0.74. Point seven four means it is having a predictive accuracy of 74% or our proposed model is able to interpret, able to explain 74% of the explained variation. So we can say that our proposed model is good or proposed model is strong. So this is R square, right? So this is the concept of R square. Now actually R square is being affected by two ways two terms is being affected by number one size of sample size of sample means that is n right so the concept is if n is small means size of sample is small right then value of r square got inflated value of r square increases so if we have a small sample size, then R square got inflated, value of R square becomes very high. So R square is affected by the size of the sample, plus R square is also affected by number of independent variables or number of predictors. They are denoted by K, right? So number of predictors means if k is large so r square being a non-decreasing function so if number of predictors number of independent variables are large then r square again got inflated means if we have a big model if we have a number of independent variables then r square will also be high so these are the two weaknesses of r square so this r square is normalized with respect to size of sample and number of predictors. And accordingly, we have a better measure known as adjusted R square. So this R square is being adjusted with respect to the size of sample and number of predictors, right? So we are, we are using adjusted R square. Actually, adjusted R square is the ratio of mean sum of square because of regression divided by mean by total mean square, right? Okay, means we taken care of these two values. So we have a better measure of adjusted R square. In this case, we have adjusted R square as 0.73. Let me show you the output. Yeah, we have adjusted R square is 0.733. Okay. So we are having adjusted R square is 0.73, right? So again, it gives 73%, 73% again gives the impression of a strong model. So as you see, here we are having R square as 0.74 and adjusted R square is 0.73. If you observe, then there is not much of the difference. So what is the reason of not much of the difference? There are two reasons. Number one, our N is 200, right? Which is much higher as compared to the uh, uh, sample size that, are, that is required as per the thumb rule, that is 20 times number of predictors. So it is much higher as compared to 120. And here, and here we are having only six predictors. So since already N is very large and K is small, so these are not having much of the impact. So that's why there is not much of the reason. So you can use any of these two values, right? So this is the explanation of R square. We have some more term. We have 
Mar, uh, we have a term R. R is known as multiple correlation coefficient between observed value of y that is phi and estimated or predicted value of y that is phi cat. So here we are having value of r or multiple correlation coefficient. Okay. Let me have this value from the output. So this r, this is the multiple correlation coefficient. This r is simply the square root of r square. So if we do square root of 0.741, we are getting a value of 0.861. So here we, we are getting a value of 0.861. This is 0.861. This value of R or multiple correlation coefficient lies in between 1 and 0. Right? Okay. So this is again closer to 1. So we can say we have a strong relationship. There is one more term. Let me explain that term also. This is a standard error of estimate. A standard error of estimate is simply the square root of MSE. Means it is the square root of 1.048. So we are getting a value of 1.024. It gives the variation with respect to the regression line. Right? So let me explain it. Suppose this is the regression line. And the values are this one. Right? So as we see that there is not much of the variation means the standard error or standard deviation of these values would be low. So here we are having a low value of standard error means which is measuring variation of the points with respect to line. Suppose in some other case, points are so scattered, right? So here much of the variation means standard error would be low. So for a good model, standard error would be low. So this is the value of standard error. This is I am showing. This is the value of standard error. So we have discussed these two things.